What's up YouTube? We're back. I haven't uploaded a video in a while, so I uh, figured I'd start now. I uh, just got done riding today at uh, Paris MX. Epic track conditions, soft dirt, ruddy conditions, overcast weather, nice and cool. Doesn't get much better than that. Um, good practice for the upcoming uh, AMA Pro Motocross Series that uh, I plan to do the first three rounds on a Suzuki again. And uh, excited about that, so uh, I figure I start this uh, journey off by giving you guys a video. Uh, I try to get better at these and uh, upload more videos and content for you guys. Um, if you want to watch it, cool. If not, that's cool too. Uh, I'm just trying to get better at this, uh, stepping outside of my element for for a little bit. So uh, we'll see how it goes. So uh, I'll start this video series off with uh, showing you guys how I wash my practice bike. Uh, my race bike, I do this more often. Uh, I do this pretty much every time I ride it. But uh, practice bike tends to go a little bit longer uh, with the, the old uh, full detail to it. So I uh, figured why not start this video series off with that. And uh, by no means is this the end-all be-all way you should wash your bike. But um, this is how I do it. And this is how I try to take care of my stuff. And I uh, always look good on track. So um, yeah, let's get started. As you can see, the old girl needs some love. Um, got a bit of hours on it, nothing too crazy, but um, been riding the 450 a lot, but just jumped back on the 250F. Uh, as you can tell by my smash Yosh, I've been trying to uh, squeeze it with my knees a little bit more. So, um, yep, first step, get the seat off, get the twin air um, air box cover in, and uh, wheel it to the back so we can get started. All right, so normally I start off by uh, having this thing leaned over and um, spraying it off from the bottom first, but uh, since it's pretty muddy and uh, as you can tell, the dirt was epic today. Um, got a twin air box cover in. So uh, start off by spraying off all the big stuff and then um, then lean it over, get the bottom all clean, then um, get it back upright, take some of the plastic off, and uh, yeah, give her a good wash. All right, so we got all the big stuff sprayed off, but uh, this is the reason why I always lean my bikes over to get them clean, because um, upright, miss all of this stuff. Under here, I already sprayed that off. I, then I realized I was filming a video, so uh, yeah, it'll be better next time. Um, but there is a common spot underneath the radiators, um, hoses, just stuff like this where um, you would miss, especially under the the forks. Me being a suspension guy, I'm kind of uh, kind of uh, OCD on this stuff, so. Um, Nothing worse than uh, getting a set of forks in for a service or a revalve and uh, you could build a super cross triple with the dirt that's in the bottom of it. So, um, yeah, little tech tip for you, clean forks, keep your suspension guy happy. So, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna get some soap on this. Uh, I use Mr. Clean and uh, green scotch bike pads that you get pretty much anywhere. Uh, give it a good scrub and spray it off and then Get it back upright. All right. So we got the other side all uh, cleaned up. Um, just Mr. Clean, Scotch Bright. Um, if you guys want, you can get um, Maxima uh, chain cleanup and spray it on your engine. Uh, get it wet first, spray it on the engine, let it sit for a bit. And uh, it kind of takes off the oil and the grime and uh, the buildup and uh, makes the metal pretty shiny. Uh, I ran out of it, so I couldn't use it here. But uh, yeah, that's also a, a good thing that you guys can try out. And um, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Um, I love doing it because it kind of makes the motor look look fresh, um, like it hasn't touched dirt, uh, which is nice. Uh, luckily, here in California, our dirt doesn't really stain, but makes uh, the bike just look a lot more clean. So uh, get this thing back upright, spray it off one more time, and uh, start taking the plastic off. Alright, so got all the plastic off. Uh, I'm going to spray it off, get some of the dirt out of here. As you can see, this is all dirt and grime that gets uh, 
caught up behind the shrouds and stuff over time um yeah on the subframe so um good to take your plastics off every once in a while and um get those all cleaned up Dan's looking pretty bad on the Yoast, so we might have to pull that off and uh, put the stock one on and uh, see if we can get this one refurbished or not. So, uh, yeah. And I always put the bolts and um, the little inserts that go on the plastic all back in there just so um, I can get those cleaned um, and I don't lose them, drop them or anything like that. So, uh, same with this side. Some just dirt built up. Get everything cleaned up, back to looking, looking 100%. And um, I always take this time to um, kind of go over everything, make sure all, nothing's falling off, nothing crack, chip, or uh, stuff like that. So um, yeah, get this thing um, soaped up, frame scrubbed, give it a final spray, and. Um, Get it back in the garage, spray it off with air, uh, just so don't have water sitting in any other connectors and stuff. And a uh, good tip is to also uh, avoid hitting these too hard with the pressure washer and getting too much water in there. Could mess those up. So uh, yeah, that's that's it for that. So uh, on to the next step. Scrubby, scrubby. On this part of the frame, I always go this way. Uh, I never go down like that. Uh, I just don't like the way it looks. Uh, down here where it's a little bit rougher, you can kind of just go in circles or this way. But um, up here, I recommend uh, going long ways and um, should turn out pretty good once we're all done. You guys already know. Can't uh, can't skip the best part in uh, an RMZ. You gotta always make sure this baby's shined up, looking good. All right, so here's the finished product. A lot of people use um, SOS pads on their frame, and uh, it kind of gives it more of a shiny look. Uh, I'm not quite a fan of that. I kind of like this uh, more factory looking color, I guess. So yeah, but. Um, under the under the shrouds are all clean, subframes all clean. And uh, if you guys get a new bike and you get a chance to frame it or you're framing in, um, your current bike, uh, this technique works too with scotch bright pads. Uh, you can go crazy if you wanted to use wet sandpaper and get the bottom part of the frame all shiny, but uh, I kind of like it more of a grippy feel. So yeah, and once you do this once, like once it's completely clean down to the frame it's always a little bit easier to keep it clean so yeah that's um, kind of the gist of how I wash this thing um, gonna get it back in the garage get it um, air compressed off which I'm not gonna show you because my air compressor is obnoxiously loud and um, get the rest of the plastics washed and uh, yeah get her back together Nice and soapy. Flip them over. It's also another good reason why to take them off and wash them because that's what they looked like after I was done spraying them off while they were on the bike. Um, yeah, a bit dirty. Ooh. I think those were sitting on the pipe, huh? Whew. We're not there get a new one of those but uh, yeah get this thing washed up get in the garage before it starts raining here in california which is crazy to say but we've been getting a lot of it which is good so uh yep check back with you in a little bit forgot to mention these uh little boot scuff marks i don't ever scrub those with the scotch bright pad or sos pad just because it dulls the graphics and kind of gives it a takes a shine away from them 
Oh, and uh, also, this skid plate, Kirby skid plate, I bought for my race bike. It's been on the race bike for two nationals, Washougal National, Paula 2 National, multiple practice days. Um, this thing's been holding up like a dream. Uh, bought this thing, didn't get it free, so it's not an ad, but I'm just trying to let you guys know that if you're looking for a skid plate for your RMZ, this is definitely the way to go. It protects the water pump pretty good and uh, the ignition cover, prevents rock things or chips or all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, definitely check them out. All right, got it all dried off. Got a uh, fresh twin air air filter in there. Got the chain all lubed up to prevent rust. Probably gonna need a new chain and sprocket here in a minute, but anyway. Twin air filter, gonna start it up, let it run for a minute, let the rest of the water evaporate, and that should be good. All right, so we're gonna end the video there. Uh, just got done warming up the bike, uh, letting all the water evaporate out of all the connectors and stuff. So it's not just sitting in there and causing more problems down the road. So I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, we're gonna save the rest of the bike work for, for another day. I did a 15 minute warm up in 2.30s today. So I'm pretty tired. So I'm gonna get some food in my system and kind of relax the rest of the day. And uh, we'll be back. We gotta do uh, put the plastic on, do an oil change, uh, put a fresh clutch in it. Uh, that'll be in the next video. So I uh, appreciate all you guys watching. Um, be sure to like and subscribe, as they say. Um, leave a comment. What do you think? Uh, I want to know uh, what you guys do a little bit different when you wash your bikes or um, what do you think I could improve on. So I'm always down to learn something new. So uh, thanks again and uh, stay tuned for the next video.